motorcycles team. Looks like he's just concentrating today on uh, one bike. He's normally here with two, sometimes three. Here we are, nice to get away. And the boys have got a bit of traction as well. Matt, I think, might have tried to get um, always an opportunity to start out so well on the race. But uh, can't stay with those guys. Yeah, the start is spectacular. He, he just gets off the line straight away. And you can see he just goes straight to the inside to defend. And he's obviously in the lead again for the third race in a row. He's got Nick and Matt right behind him. Oh, Steve Bridge there has a problem with his bike. Now he pulls off the track, gets out the way, everyone makes it through safe. But yeah, Zurin's riding really well today. You know, he's not he's not finishing um, up the front with those guys, but you know, he's putting on a, an amazing performance. Always first laps really good. I um, mean, you can just see there he's out driving Nick Burke. So he's um he's coming to form really well. Oh, Nick's a bit hot into turn seven there. Does he pull it up? Oh, he does. Well, Steve knew that there was something wrong straight away with his bike, didn't he? That seemed to be totally yep. mechanical. The bike just all of a sudden had a flat spot, and he did and quickly threw his hand up to tell the, the one rider that was behind him, hey, look out, uh, mate, I'm uh, having some problems here. But he did hold his line, and then once that other rider had gone past him, he just pulled over here to the infield. That's a good place to be, because if anybody's going to get out on that turn three, they're going on the outside of it yep. as they head away, so he's safe on the inside there. Yeah, I've been caught out there by a bike shutting down one time on the exit of turn two, and... He went to the outside, to the inside, then back to the outside, and ended up running across the track, and I just gunned it straight to the other side to rejoin. <laughs> Nick's away now. He's completed the first lap. He's got a second lead from Matt Drayson. So he started out really well with a good fast lap there. But I think we'll see Matt Drayson set into a bit of a we'll catch back up, and then we'll have another five on our hands. Is it for, in fact, for uh, the end of lap number one, that, 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 those three, that's about the widest have been apart. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think Zurin there, because he, he's riding real defensively on the first lap, because I think he knows that those boys have got a little bit more pace in him, so he's defending quite a bit, and um, I think Matt just took a bit longer to get past than Nick did, so they got the gap spread out, but you can see Matt's pulling him in a bit here. So we've had the uh, the comfort of being inside the tower here today, not feeling the atmosphere outside. What's happened uh, temperature-wise and uh, moisture-wise out there, uh, Connor? Still cold and wet. That's about it. It, it. it started to dry a little bit, but then there was a bit of a shower again, and, it, and then it soaked the track all over. So, yeah, we're definitely not going to get a dry one in today. But, um, yeah, it's nice that it's not pouring down, especially for the marshals. Those guys are out there standing in it all day. So, yeah, we wouldn't be here without them. Here, here. Let's, let's look at the bike battles going on on the racetrack as they turn off the uh, back straight, come round through here to the uh, Kawasaki uh, front straight, and there we are, one and two, and certainly that margin, <laughs> yeah, that's better. That's back less than a second, point nine nine two. so uh, Matt closing the gap down on that, that time, Connor. Yeah, both of them on really fast laps there, both of them to the high 20, so that's about the fastest they've been all day, so it's, it's not any drier than it was. It's at, if not wetter than the last race, but they're obviously getting a bit more to grip with their bikes and they're pushing on a bit. Well, speaking about uh, Kawasaki, hey, our, uh, our, our good friend uh, Shane Richardson uh, racing in the UK, going to those tracks that we've all talked about. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, um, Borton Park, Cadwell, Cadwell. Cool. Oh, man, I mean, you love that place. And uh, all those neat little tracks, Ruxton and the others. So uh, yeah. he's having a good series, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing really well. I think he's turned a few heads over there. He's um, just finished on the podium in the last race, starting from 10th place because he had a bit of a bit of a bike problem. Um, and he only got out for the last two laps of qualifying, so he put it in 10th and um, led for most of the race, apparently. And, um, yeah, just lost out on the last corner and lost two spots. So a bit of a bugger, but, no, he's doing really well from that far back. Right, what's what's the launching pad? Where do you think is the next step for Roshani to go? Like he did not come back and race in New Zealand last time because he was yeah. concentrating on another step. He's got to keep turning every step into a positive one. Exactly, yeah, he's got to move up. But unfortunately over there, the the thing is, no one's going to take anyone for it for free. Um, it's unfortunately the way of the sport over there. You need some serious money to get out of a domestic championship. Like if you're racing the BSB, you can stay in the BSB, you can go career but to get to that next level you need money which is which is what's hard for everyone coming from overseas it's the biggest thing that some of those guys need serious money to get into the world championships but Shane for sure needs to move up I think he's well deserved of a super sport ride at the very least so I think we'll see some big things from him good news good news but more importantly from a selfish point of view I'd love to see him back in New Zealand but yeah. hey the best you will know that takes a lot of money as well so uh, yeah just some good sponsors and uh, something because man add him amongst Avalon Biddle and uh, Toby Summers yeah. and uh, that oh how nice would it be maybe even a superbike ride I don't know but uh, if, he, if he wants
wants to do super sport globally, stay on the super sport exactly. and get every every little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But there is things to take from the super bike as well that you can learn to put onto the 600s. There's quite a few um, things that you can learn and take from it. So, you know, it's, it's all about seat time, I think. All right, so uh, Nick Burke, ladies and gentlemen, Mac Drayson with the Zurin Wiki, Miles McDonald, that we've got to Steve Bridge, unfortunately, who did uh, uh, not last uh, long in the race and, and, and on start by uh, Robbie Oxenham uh, means that uh, we're only left with the four in the race at the moment. So a bit of an attrition rate after the round, but I'll tell you what, nothing wrong with the uh, two that we're watching. And again, with uh, Nick and uh, Matt in their battle, margin down 2.774, so it was 0.992. Second off it, but uh, still not enough at this stage. Uh, Nick Burke, Matt Drayson, um, have you got sort of a, a style, of, a favour, a preference, a bike out of those two? What position do you like, and uh, and why were those two, uh, Connor? Well, the, it's hard to say really. I've I've only ever ridden the the older ones, older versions of what they're on. But I mean, the, the, they both have their positives. I mean, Nick's riding so good on that 600. Um, to be battling with the super bikes, always a good ride. So if you're chasing him, that um, Nat's a little bit far back, so he's having to put in a bit of effort to catch up and chase him down. And then there's Nick on his own out the front trying to find out what the fastest way around the track is. And Matt's got the advantage that he, he can see what, what Nick's doing and where he's going faster and slower, so he's learning from Nick. But I think it, in, a, in a couple of laps, it looks like the gap's closed down a little bit, but, um, yeah, there could be a good battle at that for the last few laps. Right, so uh, as we, it's politely worded, it's only a two-horse race for the glory, but there is actually only four of them in the race overall, and third and fourth are spread right out there. Probably can't even see each other that far apart, but for this race out in front that was uh, a 0.7 has now gone to 1.7, so just when we sort of got an idea that Matt was starting to close the gap up, all of a sudden, Nick proves his yeah, wrong. Yeah, Nick just put in the fastest lap of the race just then, so he's yeah. found something. He's coming to grips with it really well, so... Matt's definitely got some work cut out for him to catch back up to Nick. I think that's the fastest lap of anyone of the day, that lap. Uh, they, they got, both got wets? Yeah, definitely. You wouldn't yep. be out on the island dry. It's, it's, still, it's still very wet out there. As much as it's not raining, it's living in a cloud, as I call it. Is that still yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, might it be nice because tomorrow potentially the sun comes out again? Yeah, hopefully. Nick's just stretching this out now. He's found something. He's pulling the gap more and more and more each corner. That's bigger than 1.7 now for sure. Yeah. So that's the advantage you're going at the moment. So uh, Nick Burke out of Fogatani on the 2017 Yamaha R6600. of Bay Ride Motorcycles, Yamaha New Zealand, Yamalu, Carl Cox Motorsport, Shoei, Revit, City 5, uh, Leit and Bridgestone. Speaking of uh, Yamaha, big news behind the scenes that uh, Yamaha have appointed... Uh, former motocross star Josh Coppins is the motorsport manager and creating a new, uh, Josh has created a new team. He's uh, uh, had the opportunity to catch up with him last weekend. He's got the uh, big craft event that they'll be on board. He's just having a brand new trailer, mate. Um, Dave Collins just having an input with the two boys. So still again, Jake Lewis, the boogie, uh, and the F1, and then the satellite team with the 600 round and Morgan Chan and, and young Harry Parker, who's uh, our young man who's over in Australia getting some experience this weekend, will be in that team. So effectively two teams with that Yamaha but a, a full commitment to uh, road racing funding. So uh, oh, yeah. Al Hoogie, man, are we watching the improvement in that guy? He, he's uh, he's the next rider to make a pounce in the uh, Connor. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely going to be one to watch this season. I remember him back on the uh, 600. He absolutely dominated one season. He broke every lap record at most of the tracks. So he's definitely a really talented rider. And this year he's got quite a bit of support behind him. He's on a good bike. He's on his second year with the team. So it should be a really big show for them. Yeah, and the positive thing as well is that the first two rounds are in the South Island, his tracks, and, uh, and I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll pick up some wins down there to uh, set the light. And if he can just keep his nerve, because we found with the South Island was Hampton Downs as he bogeyed it. Mate, there's not many that can go from the South to go to Hampton Downs. You see, so many didn't find it as a, because it's such a different circuit from the South, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so different down there up here. Um, I mean, you, the, you see it towards the end of the season of riders that you don't really, like Daniel down in the South Island, he was he wasn't really battling for the lead in most of the races but then you come up here and he's up the front most of the races and then down and then that's the vice versa for our movie so it's, it's going to be real interesting here we go right back to our race and uh, Nick Burke over uh, Matt Drayson the 4.6 the buffer now for uh, Nick Zorin Wiki back there 
uh, them two, uh, Miles McDonald and unfortunately Steve Bridge, and uh, still packed on the infield. But uh, hats off to Steve today for uh, what he's done there. Did the right thing, certainly. See, there's something just for people to understand. Like he could have, eaten, he was on the left hand, sorry, the right hand side of the track. It would have been a natural thing to have pulled over to the right hand side because it's less to travel. But he knew that that's the exit for that corner is on the left hand side. So come back on the inside and not be in people's way. That's intelligence, and exactly. we haven't had to see a red flag for it. Yeah, exactly. And also that means we'll be able to get back to the pits faster at the end of the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, and if, uh, I'm sure for a sponsor, they'll put out a, a fresh recovery there for yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Stay there. <laughs> just see Nick here, he's improving about half a second each lap and he's just inching this lap, this gap from Matt out more and more every lap, so he's dropped half a second off in the last lap, taking the chicken flag here. So with it not having rained as much today as living in the cloud and about all that rain earlier, what's it done to a wet time today? A little bit of a hard time. Yeah, think. yeah, there was one race that the, the there was a bit of wear coming on our tyre, um, just it, it hadn't dried out completely, but um, there wasn't a lot of sitting water, so there's a little bit more temperature in the tyre, which causes it to wear a bit more. So, I mean, now is ideal conditions, but a lot of these guys might have their wets um, a bit, a bit tired from the race before, so I think they could be struggling a little bit. I mean, the superbike for sure will have more wear on their tyre than the 600, so that could have been something that happened to Matt there. Um, he could just be struggling a bit with tyre wear. 